What do you think about gluten-free sourdough chocolate chunk cookies? Let's do it. But first, if we haven't met, my name is Heather and I am maintaining remission of Hashimoto's lichen sclerosis and cancer of the vulva with a food as medicine approach. Now, I'm a functional nutritionist helping others recover their health from chronic illness as well. So glad you're here. Let's get into this recipe. All right, so the very first thing we're gonna do for this recipe is we are going to cream together the butter and the sugar. So this recipe calls for two sticks of butter and then half a cup of brown sugar and half a cup of white sugar. So I don't stock brown sugar, so I'm going to use one cup of white sugar and uh, one teaspoon of molasses with my two sticks of butter. And I'm old school. <laughs> I really love my hand mixer. I don't do the stand mixers because I don't, I don't bake with conventional ingredients all that often, right? Tender autoimmune flour, cancer survivor. I don't do sugar, I don't do grains. So my beloved husband, Blake, will be taste testing these cookies for me to make sure they come out okay. And uh, I'm sure he's gonna love it because he doesn't get sugar all that often either. If you do want to substitute the sweetener here, you absolutely can. You can use something like monk fruit or erythritol or allulose. If you're familiar with those, then you know kind of how they work. Uh, if you're not familiar with those, then your best bet is probably gonna go with uh, erythritol. It's a straight swap for sugar. And if you've been off sugar for a long time like I have, then you may want to cut down on the sweetener so that they're not as sweet. It's totally your call. All right, let's get these creamed together. Oh, I should let this butter thaw a little more. One egg. And we're gonna mix it all until well incorporated. Save my eggshells for the garden. This is my homemade vanilla. It's just bourbon and vanilla beans. So I actually prefer to use bourbon than, than vodka to make my homemade vanilla extract. And I clean as I go, right? So there's that. And then I think we are gonna do three quarters of a cup of sourdough starter. So I have a full cup here. And Chuck. Chuck is nice and full, and we want to pull him down. So this is actually active starter, um, but it's actually, this is a discard recipe, so it's completely up to you what you use. So I'm just gonna fill up this one cup, about three quarters of the way full. enough, right? And then we will, don't worry, hands are clean. Get all this in here. I'm into using my hands. My family, my kitchen, my rules, right? My hands are clean, so we're good to go. Grandma would be proud, getting into it. 
You do what you want to do if you want to use a spoon or a knife. You don't want to over mix because then you'll end up with a cakey cut cookie. And I don't want a really cakey one. I'm looking for like a, a different kind of consistency of texture. All right. Now, that's it for the wet ingredients. Now we're going to get the dry ingredients. Woo. Get back in there. It's not not going to be good unless you make a mess, right? So what I've got is two cups of Pamela's gluten-free all-purpose flour. So you choose two cups of whatever flour you're going to use. If you want to make this gluten full, you can use regular flour. It should work the same. And to that, I am going to add two tea or excuse me, one teaspoon of salt. I use Redmond's because I love the mineral profile a half a teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Add all of that together. That's it for my dry ingredients. And then you should mix those together, but I don't really bother mixing my dry ingredients together. I just get them in there. And now we are going to mix the wet and the dry together. And the recipe actually tells you to go ahead and do this a third at a time. Um, until it's all incorporated, but you know how I roll. I just kind of dump it all in there and go with it. Just careful not to make a mess. You get flour all over the place. All right, got a spatula. Move this over here. With this number just to get the flour a little bit wet so it doesn't fly all over the place. Hopefully. with a hand mixer, right? Chop 
These, I'm using these discs. These are um, just dark chocolate pieces. You can put them in a hole if you like want to get crazy and get some real good chocolatey business going on. I'm going to run a, run a knife through them real fast. And I don't measure chocolate, right? Your mix mix-ins can be as heavy as your heart desires. And like I said, these are unsweetened chocolate discs. No dairy, no sugar. All right, and we are just gonna fold them in. Gently. Gently fold them in. That's it. That is what we're working with. All right, let's get this. You don't want to over mix because then you'll end up with a cakey cut cookie and I don't want a really cakey one I'm looking for like a, a different kind of consistency of texture that's it for the wet ingredients now we're going to get the dry ingredients Ooh, get back in there it's not not gonna be good unless you make a mess right so what I've got is two cups of Pamela's gluten-free all-purpose flour. So you choose two cups of whatever flour you're going to use. If you want to make this gluten full, you can use regular flour. It should work the same. And to that, I am going to add two tea or excuse me, one teaspoon of salt. I use Redmond's because I love the mineral profile. A half a teaspoon of baking soda and a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. Add all of that together. That's it for my dry ingredients. And then you should mix those together, but I don't really bother mixing my dry ingredients together. I just get them in there. And now we are going to mix the wet and the dry together. And the recipe actually tells you to go ahead and do this a third at a time um, until it's all incorporated, but you know how I roll. I just kind of dump it all in there and go with it. Just. Careful not to make a mess, you get flour all over the place. All right, got a spatula. Move this over here. And we will use and all of this stuff. Thank you. 
well. Do a little bit of this number just to get the flour a little bit wet. So it doesn't fly all over the place. Hopefully. And I don't measure chocolate, right? Your mix mix-ins can be as heavy as your heart desires. And like I said, these are unsweetened chocolate discs. No dairy, no sugar. All right, and we are just gonna fold them in. Just gently. Gently fold them in. Okay. That's it. That is what we're working with. Just gonna fold them in. Just gently. Gently fold them in. That's it. That is what we're working with. We have our um, oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm going to use my misto. I love this thing. And I'm going to get my pan nice and oiled so these suckers don't stick. Avocado oil in here. That's why I love the miso because I can control the kind of oil that I use. And we are just going to put our cookies on the cookie sheet and get them in the oven. So I just use two spoons, and I just take a glop and make a cookie. So this recipe makes two dozen, unless you decide to get crazy and have monster sized cookies, which is totally up to you. Make them however large you want, whatever shape you want. Your kitchen, you decide what you want to do. I, for one, can barely follow a recipe to save my life. Even my, my own recipes that I put together for my blog for you guys, 
size still. These are going to be gigantic. That's all right. We will see how far they spread out. If we end up with one giant cookie bar, that is fine by me. I mean, Blake's going to eat them regardless. Because cookies are cookies, right? Yay. Cookies are cookies. Okay. These go in 350 degrees for about 10 minutes or until they are as crispy as you want them. They should start to brown on the edges. That's how you know they're done. Unless you like them crispier, then keep on going. So I just use two spoons, and I just take a glop and make a cookie. So this recipe makes two dozen, unless you decide to get crazy and have monster sized cookies, which is totally up to you. Make them however large you want, whatever shape you want. Your kitchen, you decide what you want to do. I, for one, can barely follow a recipe to save my life. Even my, my own recipes that I put together for my blog for you guys, I still, these are going to be gigantic. That's all right. We will see how far they spread out. We end up with one giant cookie bar. That is fine by me. I mean, Blake's gonna eat them regardless. Because cookies are cookies, right? Yay. Cookies are cookies. Okay. These go in. 350 degrees for about 10 minutes or until they are as crispy as you want them. They should start to brown on the edges. That's how you know they're done. Unless you like them crispier, then keep on going. All right, so we got our cookies. They're looking good. And they're cooled. They're um, crispy on the bottom. Let's go get Blake and see what he thinks. All right, Blake, what do you think? Needs more chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Tastes okay. And there you have it. Gluten-free sourdough chocolate chunk cookies. So Blake's review was that they were really good, really, really fluffy. Um, not too sweet, but they did need more chocolate. So the recipe calls for two cups of chocolate chunks and I just put in whatever I thought was appropriate. So looks like I need to be a little bit more heavy handed with the chocolate. So I hope that you guys love this recipe. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out with us for Fall Into Sourdough. So this is my second video contribution in the collaboration from the Fermented Homestead. Thanks so much for involving me, Anna. I had a blast. Um, don't forget to comment on this video and Anna's videos and everybody else in the collaboration in order to enter into the giveaway um, Monday nights during her live. Anna's drawing names at random and giving away sourdough cookbooks, which are fantastic. And at the end of the month, she's going to be raffling off a full sourdough kit, uh, bannetons and uh, the little razors for the, the bread dough and all of the things, including, I think, some more cookbooks. So all you have to do to enter is just comment on the videos from the channels that are involved in the collaboration, all of which will be in the description below. And I had a blast. Thanks so much. Um, remember, food is love.
and real food is medicine. So nourish the ones that you love and yourself. See you next time.